All right, I'm beginning the repair of that SL Amps Custom Clean, which is a pretty well-made copy of a Dumble solid string, uh, not solid state, <laughs> steel string swinger. It's been a long day. So this is the bias board. This is the one that burned so badly. You can see the char there beneath that nail polish. Um, they had this HT connection jumper to here. Then a uh, two or three watt, I don't recall, 3.3K dropping resistor. Then the diode. And then the diode's uh, output went to the bias supply and was jumpered over here to a capacitor, a filter cap going to ground here, and that resistor burned horribly, and it got hot enough, probably actually flamed, that it destroyed the capacitor. So I have a jumper wire here, which has the same 3.3K dropping resistor, though the new one is a five watt, and it's mounted off the board for some airflow. It would take a lot for this five watt to, to burn. It would take a lot for it to even get hot. We're going to do some other things. I say we. It's the royal we. We are very amused, and we shall uh, be doing some other things to prevent that uh, overcurrent condition from occurring again. But the uh, capacitor, the filter for this stage, is being moved elsewhere. Let me reinstall this in the amp, and I'll, I'll show you what we do next. Okay, it's all reconnected now with the HT supply, the bias feed. Uh, the HD secondaries, this ground was going up here for the old filter cap, is no longer needed. It'll just stay disconnected for, for now. I'll probably put a bit of tape over it. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff we're going to do. The next thing I'm going to do, though, this is a 22K. This is a 1.8K. This was a mistake. They were re reversed. And that 1.8K, which is going to the reverb transformer. Is getting toasty so those are going to get swapped out three watt 1.8 k is going there three watt 22 k is going there so we'll do that next okay we've got new three watts in place this black wire here used to be beneath the board um it, it fell down beneath the board when i was doing this and since other connections are made on top of the board i didn't feel like flipping the whole thing up to be able to reattach it from below it's uh, absolutely fine here. The important thing is that I anticipated it. I had my mirror ready to look under the board, make sure that these connections stay good. This one did. This one came loose. This one got fixed. That's just one of the things about working on boards like this where you don't know what's happening underneath. You have to find out. So um, now this white wire is the bias supply, and it comes uh, to this resistor and this resistor, which go to the cathodes, of this 12BH7. It could also be a 12AX7. In this case, it's 12BH. And then it goes to this voltage divider, which also has a trim pot over here to fine tune it, which sets the bias uh, voltage for the grids on the inputs of that 12BH7. And um, more on that in a bit. I need to get the amp to the point where we can power it on first. So there's two more things I need to do, uh, and I'll show you that. Oh, I should mention this while this here. This is all going to get moved. This voltage divider, this wiring is going to get changed. And this new nice uh, Rubicon, very long life uh, cap will go in place from here to, heat, to uh, a new ground point there. That'll get this well away from the heat over on the uh, input bias board where the old cap, the axial burned. But in the meantime, I'm going to solder it temporarily in place over here. Uh, which is not going to be the prettiest, but it'll be fine for our test purposes. So let me see, get that set up. All right, there's the new Rubicon temped in place. This is not where it's going to be, but it's fine here for right now. Before I can power the amp on, I've got to change out this old power receptacle because the fuse holder in it, the way it was mounted in the amp, goes upside down. And the fuse just kept falling right out. Let's see if I can get this right. I guess it was like this. Let's see. All right, it was in the amp like this, and the fuse just falls right out. So I've got a new one. Let's see if the fuse falls out of it, or if I need to flip the whole thing upside right. 
This new one is a uh, Bulgan. And it looks the same, you know. But when you put it in, in that orientation, it's an actual drawer. The fuse cannot fall. So let me put this in place real quick, wire it up, and then we'll uh, be in business. And put the fuse in there, make sure it snaps tight. Yeah. So, you know, this was like a dollar fifty or so. I have no idea how cheap this one was, um, but this is the way to go because it's terrible having the fuses literally fall. So that's just two uh, screws, and then I'll resolder those wires. Let me do that real fast. All right. New power switch installed and wired up with the correct fuse. I have pulled the four output tubes just in case one of them is faulty. More on that in a little bit. This one's got a broken center locator. Um, I did not see that it was installed correctly uh, in the socket. I did see that there was no center pin still stuck in the socket. So it's possible that it broke, someone pulled the tube out and put it back just one over from where it should be. Because without that center key pin, you can put it in any orientation. That might be what caused the failure over here. Um, but with the output tubes pulled and the 12BH7 in place, I'm gonna power it on in standby with my current limiter and see what happens. Now I'm curious, I'm gonna make sure that we do have a bias voltage, even with the amp in standby. We shouldn't have HT going anywhere other than maybe the first bank of filter caps, but we should not have any loss of the bias negative voltage. Even with the current limiter on, that should be fairly substantial. Negative 225 with the current limiter in place. And uh, let's see what the unloaded B plus is on this thing. 730 volts. So I don't want to run this too much without the power tubes. Uh, but let me... Uh, Turn off the current limiter, keeping it in standby for a moment. And I want to see what our negative voltage goes to. And that is now negative 222 and uh, 738 on the unloaded B+. Plus. Now the dumble showed like three negative 385 at this point where we've got negative 221. Like something else is drawing current wrong. This because there's negative 42 volts here. And at the grids we have negative 41. Negative 41 all around. I'm curious what happens to the grid voltage if that 12BH7 goes away. So pull that, and with no 12BH7, the grid voltage is negative 144. That's good. It means if that tube fails in such a way that there's no current there, the output tubes just go to a really cold state. And without that 12BH7, we're at negative 288 on the voltage. That's still quite a bit different. And the bias is now at negative 54 here, where it was like negative 41 without that 12BH7. I'm wondering if that 12BH7 is possibly faulty. Now, I can put a 12AX7 where that 12BH7 is, and it won't hurt anything. Let's see if the voltages 
are like with a dog standard 12x7 there. Don't swap tube types unless you know what you're doing. Or know how to fix any mistakes you might make. Or both. I don't like fixing my own mistakes, so I, t I try not to make them. But, you know, always a first time for everything. Set drop from negative 50 down to negative 50, 44 here. Negative 43 now. It's 224 there. That seems wrong to me. Negative 48 on the grids of the output tubes with the 12x7 versus negative 41 with the 12bh7. Well, I'm gonna try something. All right, so. Two twenty-two on the negative. I'm gonna adjust this bias pipe. It's not a real bias pipe, and it's externally accessible, which is not my favorite. So I'm gonna turn it all the way clockwise, and that's it. Two twenty, all the way counterclockwise. Two twenty. Two. So that's not affecting the raw any. Let's see what it's affecting here. So 44.9, if that, that's a negative. And forty point six. So that'll be the hottest. I said to the coolest. I'm not too sure. I like this circuit. I want to make sure that this bias voltage is not too affected by changes here. 220. So the raw is staying about the same. And All right, so it's just the, the bias reference for the grid that matters. All right, now if I was feeling really foolish, I put the power tubes in right now and uh, see what it sounds like. But I still have not found why this failure happened. And this amp, like the Dumble it's copying, um, is... Um, problematic in that if you have a failure in an output tube which affects the grid that can smoke this supply the way it happened before or if you have a failure uh, in the 12bh7 or 12ax7 driving the output tubes the cathode follower stage and the fail tube fails in such a way that something were to short to the cathode as opposed to just not conducting it could also damage your output tubes. So your output tubes are, depending on the health of a, of a little dual triode, um, if it's not there at all or stops conducting, your output tubes are fine. But if something were to shorten that tube, things go wrong with output tubes. And if something goes wrong with the output tubes, bad things can happen here. So I spoke to the owner about this, and I also spoke to the guy who built this, SL Amps, really nice guy. And I spoke to Yellow Welligan, my friend at Welligan Amps, who specializes in, in Dumble builds. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to power it off. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to drill some very careful holes between the output tubes. I'm going to install these fuse holders. Each output tube will have its own cathode fuse so that if a tube were to be faulty because that happens 
rather than burn up the power supply again, like it did because it was really stinky, it will just trip a fuse. A little 250 milliamp fuse ought to do it. And I'm going to uh, reconfigure this bias circuit a little bit better, in my opinion, so that uh, I know that, uh, um, what's the best way to put this? So that I know that changes in the bias won't ever drop the mains uh, negative supply. And I'd really like to get rid of this standard alpha pot because someone could reach from the other side and turn that nut knowing what it does. So I want to um, see what my options are for a bias pot which is not externally adjustable. Or if it is, that it's like the, the Fender style, which is usually only available in a 10K, so that may be difficult. Um, I don't think 10K is going to give me enough range. You know, the, the one that you have to have a screwdriver rather than your buddy come over and say, hey, what's that knob do? Anyway, that's where I'm going to stop for the night. I'm also going to be um, upgrading the screen grid resistors to some 1Ks from these 470 ohms. And I'm going to be installing uh, some flyback diodes on each pair uh, from the plate to ground. Uh, just because current production tubes uh, don't last as long um, as the old ones, as I mentioned in the previous video on this. So, uh, I want to be sure that if one of these 6L6s is, is faulty, that this won't burn all over again, even with that 5 watt. Um, most amp circuits, a failure in output tube will blow an HT fuse. In this amp, the HT fuse is here. It is the uh, center tap to ground connection of the HT supply, and it did not trip when this burnt. So this circuit is unique in how it has this massive high voltage supply, which can be absolutely zapped if anything's wrong with that output tube. I'm sorry to be re repetitive, but I want to be very clear on what I'm doing on this very expensive and potentially wonderful amplifier. Okay, next morning, and the four fuse holders have been drilled and installed. I chose these uh, to match the stock HT fuse. And uh, later I'll label what fuses go in here and which tube is associated with what. There's that standard alpha pot being used for bias. It's not going to make the cut uh, in the long run, but it's there for now. Um, and uh, of the four output tubes, this is the one where the key uh, pin had broken off. And I suspect that might be the root cause of this, that the tube was out, the, the center key broke off, someone put it back in, and they, were, they didn't put it back right. And that could cause the problems this amp had. It also means that I don't know if this tube is still good. Hopefully it is. Hopefully everything's great. If this tube is still good and everything's working fine, I can glue a, a, a center hole replacement onto this tube and we won't have to get new tubes. If it's not good, um, I've got the uh, uh, numbers on the tubes. Maybe I can find one that matches it. Um, getting tubes right now is tricky. It's going to get trickier. Um, you can also see the new half power switch uh, which has the same bat and protrudes from the chassis as much as the others, the often the power and the standby. Um, the, the one that was in there had a lot of wiggle to it, and both the bushing and uh, the bushing extended more from the chassis than these two, and the um, uh, the bat, the toggle itself was much longer. And I suspect that maybe it got damaged in, damaged in transit, maybe. Amp was put down on its back in transport, and that switch took a blow. So this new uh, shorter bat switch mounted the same distance from the chassis as the others should be much more rugged. Let's flip this over and, and see what's up. Now, I have not made my changes to the bias circuit yet. That will come. I'm going to order a few parts because I've got a slightly different layout I want to do in this area to make this. It'll be the same circuit, only better but it'll be a more secure mounting for the filter cap and uh, we can have 
a dedicated trimmer pot that is not externally accessible. This alpha will go away. I've got a three eighths inch, three inch uh, plug I can put in the chassis there. So all will be well. Let me uh, um, power it up. I've got the tubes in, 250 milliamp fuses. I'm going to uh, set the bias pretty much as cold as it will go. Make sure everything's working okay with the current limiter. Then I'll actually set the bias for this thing. And then I'll know where we're at. Uh, the, the range of it has doesn't seem to be huge. And I want to make sure that before I change the bias circuit, I may need to uh, uh, do some modeling uh, to see what uh, values would give me the correct range I need. I'm also a little bit concerned that that uh, uh, raw negative voltage is about negative 220, whereas on the, the, the Dumble schematic is about negative 385. Uh, we shall see. All right, the amp is powered on with the tubes in place, still in standby. I have checked and the bias trim pot is set to its, uh, the bias is set to its uh, most negative, so the, the coolest bias. I'm about to take it out of standby on the current limiter, and I'm hoping that nothing happens. The things that could happen are there could be a tremendous short still somewhere in the app, in which case my current limiter will kick in. Could be um, that this tube especially, the one that with a broken keyway, is faulty. Hopefully, if so, it would trigger its fuse. Uh, I'm putting it in full power mode for this, not the half power mode. I've retained the half power mode along with the, the fuses. Hopefully nothing will happen here on this uh, board where the damage occurred before. It's also possible that it trips the uh, um, HT fuse here, though it did not previously. What I suspect happened in the original chain of events was that uh, the tube with the keyway was inserted wrong. The amp blew uh, the mains fuse, which was a four amp. The owner put in the six amp fuse, and that's when this burned. Because there was enough current to burn this, not enough current to, to trip the mains fuse until this had gone really, really badly wrong. I don't know that that's what happened. That is, um, I think the most likely chain of events based on the uh, condition of the amp in terms of which fuse was blown, what value was there, where the damage occurred, and that tube with the broken keyway. So, moment of truth. Let's take it out of standby, still with the current limiter. No big surge of current. Now, I heard a sound when I did that. And I'm wondering if one of the tubes, the fuses was tripped. Because I didn't hear that sound the second time. So let me power this off. And this is the fuse for this tube. The one that I suspect of being bad. So let me check that fuse. I obviously have not had enough coffee this morning. I started to flip the amp over to physically check the tubes. And I'm, then I'm like, I'm the fuses. And I'm like, dude. Are you a tech or not? Do you have a meter? That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. And the HT fuse. All right, that was the sound I heard of the HT fuse opening up. Now, it's possible that that HT fuse was stressed before. This fuses are not the most rugged things in the world. And I, if there's a problem remaining in the amp, I'd much rather this HT fuse be the one to tell me the more smoke and awfulness there. So it's a 500 milliamp. Let me put one in. 
and I hope that I'm not just feeding it HT fuses. But it, was, it happened at the moment that the amp came out of standby. Uh, here we go. And the HT fuse in this amp and the uh, cathode fuses I installed protect against different things. I'll just say that. And you can have a bad tube, which would trick trip the HT fuse, but not trip the cathode and vice versa. So power it back on. I really have my suspicions of this particular 6L6. All right, I'm, all, I'm going to be listening for that fuse as I take it into play. All right, did you see that glow from everything? As soon as that happened, this fuse did not blow this time, but my light bulb limiter lit up. If the light bulb limiter had not been there, the mains fuse would have blown. There is a fault. Now, while it is not ideal to run an amplifier with only three of four 6L6s, for a quick test as to whether the problem goes away when I pull this one tube that I suspect of having been inserted and used in the wrong orientation. I've got the master down, and this, is, this should be a quick test. Nope, still got a short. We pull the remaining power tubes and see if the problem goes away. It could be more than one bad output tube, given the nature of the fault. Okay, to sum up where we were, just a few, well, from my perspective, it's about an hour and a half ago. From your perspective, it's a few seconds ago. But to sum up where I was, with the output tubes pulled, we had a dead short in the app. Uh, it first blew the HT fuse, which was probably on its last legs from previous surges. And it would have blown the mains fuse, except I had on a current limiter, so my light bulb went, went bright. Uh, I was first suspicious because at this node, We'd had that uh, blackened 1.8K resistor before, even though it was the incorrect value. So I measured this cap to ground, this positive, and it was a dead short. It was at ground there. Measured this one, fine. Measured this one, it was also a dead short. Now, F and T makes really good capacitors, but these are rated for 500 volts. If a tube was put in wrong, or if the amp was operated without tubes, or if there was a surge, I don't know what the, the B plus operating conditions in this amp are. It may be right up on the edge um, I will soon know whether I need to make any further changes. For right now, I've tempted in two new F and T's. This is not how it would go back out into the world, of course. But now, if I power it on and take it out of standby because there are no tubes in place, we get no big surge of current. So it's time for me to put the output tubes back in place and see where we're at. Because before, I was concerned that we might have a bad tube. And then we had this other issue. We still might have a bad tube. So we're gonna kind of go back to where we were earlier in the video. Okay, tubes back in place, powering it on. And remember, I have the bias set for the coolest possible setting in this stock circuit. I'm gonna set up a meter to read DC voltages, assuming there's nothing dramatically wrong once I take it out of standby. All right, I'm going to take it out of standby. I'll be watching the current limiter. I'll be listening for any fuses to trip. Remember, I'm suspicious of this tube, which has a cathode fuse here. And then there's the uh, main HT fuse here. All right, there's a surge of current, but it's normal. And then it settles down. I've got the master volume all the way off and the channel volume all the way off. I don't want to um, I'm not interested in whether it sounds good at this point. I'm interested in whether it operates safely. So with the current limiter, which tends to decrease voltages in the amp quite a bit, I want to see what our DC voltages are. So here at the plate, 393, here ahead of it, 393, screen, 391, 
Reverb Transformer 328 and 370, which goes to the uh, preamp stuff. And all that seems pretty good. Now I'm going to put it in standby, and I'm going to make sure that none of my fuses on the cathodes of these tubes blew. Good. 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 All right, so the tubes seem to be okay. So now let me take it out of stand. Uh, sorry, not take it out of standby. Uh, actually, before I turn the current limiter off and put it in half power mode. All right, no surges there. All that does is put 10K uh, resistors between the cathode and ground on these two tubes, which kind of sort of turns those two tubes mostly off. Um, I'll be looking at the, the effect that might have on the bias and talking about uh, impedances later that we might want to uh, tweak for that. But now, with the amp running, uh, no signal. Now, without the current limiter, our voltages are... Four seventy-four. See, it's almost a hundred volts higher. Four seventy-two. Four forty-three. Three ninety-three. Now that's all much better. Uh, that four seventy-one, thirty volts below the max rating for this cap. This one is about fifty-six volts lower than max. So if you were to run this without tubes, you would exceed the uh, uh, voltage cap capability of those caps. However, there'd be very little current in that situation. So I'm still thinking it's most likely that tube was put in uh, at the wrong angle. So I'm gonna tap on the output tubes. Okay, all that seems pretty good. I'm gonna turn the master up, see what I hear. Oops, that's presence. Okay, I hear a normal amount of low, you know, white noise. Just tells me the amp is on. Before I go any farther, I'm going to see what the bias is at with the current setup with everything. Welcome back to the amp that ate my day. Now, um, this is doing strange things. Which in standby seems to be cool. It's no longer blowing fuses or drawing, having a short condition when it's out of standby. But as soon as I take it out of standby, and this is regardless of the power tubes I use, the B plus drops from almost 500 volts down to about 100 volts. The plate voltage goes down to about 100 volts. Meanwhile, the bias voltage right here goes from negative 222 to about negative 700. Now, this is a 500 volt rated cap. So I don't know that that cap is gonna still be any good. I mean, there's no real current in that condition, but it's very strange. Um, I need to do some more reading on this, but the plate voltage is like 100 volts and the the grid voltage drops to like uh, negative 100 and something, which seems very, very wrong. And again, I've not made any changes to the bias network over here yet. Um, still using this trim pot, everything's still connected. I changed the sequence of things here and went to this five watt. And I found two faulty caps. Uh, it's possible that this one is drawing things down crazy amounts. It hasn't failed quite yet, but it, it's on its way. So what I'm going to do before I do anything else, because I don't care about the preamp right now, and I already expect to change out this cap. So I'm going to repeat 
the uh, B plus measurement in and out of standby with that stage disconnected. I mean, there won't be any preamp, but I don't care about a preamp at this point. So there's not going to be anything there, but I've got negative 218 in standby. Negative 735 and 97 volts on that plate. So something very funky is happening. <sighs> I'm going to have to replace this 500 volt cap temporarily with two caps in series, two 500 volt caps in series to give myself 700 volts capability here because I, I don't trust that this cap is going to survive that extreme old over voltage. Though it may be fine because there is very little current in that condition. I just want to rule it out. So um, I have never run into an app that behaves this way uh, where the voltage drops that huge amount an amount um, when taken out of standby. And it's not the output tubes. Um, I worry that it could be the output transformer but you know let's not borrow trouble just yet 